So this is the first video in a series of videos showing how we can draw things using modern OpenGL. And this first example is going to demonstrate how um, compatibility profile or immediate mode OpenGL does it. This may be the mode that you're most familiar with if you're coming from um, older versions of OpenGL. So what I have here is um, a framework of code that's going to use Qt to do some drawing and create an OpenGL context. And then OpenGL is going to make calls in immediate mode to do the drawing. Um, and I have here a stood vector of points, um, NGLVec3s. This is a very simple class that just contains x, y, and z uh, parameters and a union to store them also as a simple array called them OpenGL there. As they are the only elements in the class, they're stored in a contiguous block. So it's um, quite easy to um, access that data, and I can store it in a std vector. I then have this NGLMAT4 called VP. I'm going to use this to do my viewing and my projection and load that to OpenGL. And I've got a couple of methods to create a point and update a point. So in my main program, I have some basic OpenGL setup. So I call glue here, which is used to load in any OpenGL extensions. I don't necessarily need that in this case, but I call it anyway. I'm enabling some default OpenGL commands, clear, depth testing, our viewport. And then there are two commands here to the built-in OpenGL, uh, sorry, NGL commands. Um, one is called look at, which is very similar to glue look at. This is going to generate a 4 by 4 matrix called view, and I'm setting my I position to be 555, five, five, my look position to be 000, zero, zero with my upward direction being the Y axis. And I'm also creating a perspective projection matrix using the NGL perspective. Again, this is very similar to the glue look at command. Um, I've got an aspect ratio of 45 degrees. Um, sorry, field of view of 45 degrees, aspect ratio based on the width and height of the window, um, a near and far clipping plane. So I'm going to pre-calculate this because the camera is never going to move, so I can calculate this once to save time. Um, so I multiply those two matrices together and saw it in a class attribute. Um, I'm going to set the GL point size to be 5, and I'm going to start a timer which will be used to update um, some rotations a bit later on. And then create points is a built-in method. It's going to use NGL's random number generator. I'm going to resize the std vector for speed. So I just resize it to the size that I'm going to create. Loop through, generate a random point, which is one of the built-in elements of NGL random. And these are going to be in the range of plus and five, minus five in a positive and negative direction. The update points method is doing more or less the same thing and it's going to go through and it's just going to modify the array um, so that we can just demonstrate changing the points. Every frame we're going to um, render a new set of these points. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to create an NGL transformation. What that does is it stores, translate, rotate, and scales, the rotations being Euler rotations in the X, the Y, and the Z. And it will generate one single matrix, which is the product of all of these different matrices, which we can use as a modeling transformation. So in this case, I'm only setting rotation in the Y to this class attribute that's updated every frame. And I'm going to create this final modeling, viewing, and projection matrix by multiplying the matrix from that transform with my pre-calculated view and project matrix. I then load identity, which will set the current um, OpenGL matrix to the identity matrix. And then I'm going to multiply that matrix by my MVP, which is basically combining projection, camera, and this global rotation. And this is then the drawing part of it. We begin by executing gel begin gel points, then loop for every single vertex in my array, and make a call to gel vertex 3f, which is passing in each of the contiguous blocks starting with 
the X component. So if I run this, we will see my series of points. MROT is updated every time. I can modify the points as we go through. And this is sending from our client program to the server, which is how OpenGL is referred to in the documentation, this data in a stream every single time. So it's passing lots and lots of things through. Um, we could quite easily modify this. So instead of GL points, I can have GL lines. What I'm going to do is to divide size by two. So we're getting the correct amount of data and we don't step over. And you can see now it's drawing a series of lines each time it runs through. And again, I can modify that to triangles and divide by three. And we'll get a series of triangles, which is predominantly a big block of white, as you can see there, because there's no colouring or shading going on, and so on. So it's a very, very inefficient way. It doesn't utilise the um, hardware of the graphics card, and we were would be better off using modern OpenGL, which we'll look at in the next example.